Two decades ago, on September 11, 2001, suicide attackers hijacked four U.S. passenger jets and set off a chain of deadly events that would define the world for the next decade. Here is a timeline of the tragic events as they unfolded. On Tuesday, September 11, 2001, four passenger jets were hijacked by terrorists in what the Encyclopedia Britannica refers to as the deadliest terrorist attacks on American soil in U.S. history. The first of those planes was American Airlines Flight 11, which set off from Boston's Logan Airport headed for Los Angeles at 7.59 a.m., carrying 92 people. Shortly after that, at 8.14 a.m., the second plane, United Airlines Flight 175, departed from the same airport, also headed for Los Angeles. It was carrying 65 people. At 8.19 a.m., flight attendants on board Flight 11 notified ground personnel that the plane had been hijacked. Just one minute later, the third plane, American Airlines Flight 77, departed Washington Dulles Airport bound for Los Angeles, carrying 64 people. Finally, at 8.42 a.m., the fourth plane, United Airlines Flight 93, departed from Newark, New Jersey, bound for San Francisco, carrying 44 people. At 8.47 a.m., traveling at 440 miles per hour, American Airlines Flight 11 crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center in New York City, killing everyone on board and 1,462 people inside the tower, according to the 9-11 Commission report. Around 16 minutes after that, at 9.03 a.m., United Airlines Flight 175 crashed into the World Trade Center South Tower at a speed of 540 miles per hour. All 65 people on board were killed instantly as the plane hit the 81st floor, killing 600 people inside. At 9.38 a.m., American Airlines Flight 77 crashed into the Pentagon traveling at 530 miles per hour. All 64 people on board were killed, while on the ground, 125 military and civilian personnel died. Around 21 minutes later, at 9.59 a.m., the South Tower collapsed. As chaos ensued in New York, passengers on United Airlines Flight 93 voted to storm the cockpit and force the plane's hijackers to crash earlier than they had planned into an empty field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, at 10.02 a.m. The crash killed all 44 people on board. Finally, at 10.28 a.m., the North Tower of the World Trade Center collapsed. The legacy of death and destruction set into motion that day still defines the world we live in now. Less than a month after the attacks, U.S. President George W. Bush ordered the invasion of Afghanistan in order to eradicate al-Qaeda, the terror group who claimed responsibility for the attacks. The U.S. would spend almost 20 years in the country before pulling out this year. After 2009 alone, when the UN began systematically documenting casualties, around 65,000 civilians were injured in the fighting and 35,000 were killed. According to Agence France Press, 2,400 U.S. military personnel were killed in the fighting and more than 20,700 wounded. The U.S.'s most notable success in that time came in 2011, when its troops located and killed bin Laden in Pakistan. Here's how they did it. Conflicting accounts exist about Osama bin Laden's death at the hands of U.S. Navy SEALs on May 2, 2011. It's widely agreed the raid was conducted by about two dozen SEALs who flew into Pakistan from Afghanistan. Two Black Hawk helicopters carrying the SEALs arrived at bin Laden's Abbottabad compound 30 minutes after midnight local time. One of the helicopters crashed inside the compound, but no one aboard was seriously injured. The other Black Hawk landed safely outside the compound, and the SEALs scaled the wall to join their cohorts inside. Investigative reporter Seymour Hirsch wrote last year that contrary to initial reports, there was no firefight at the compound. Reports at the time said three men and a woman were killed in the raid, along with bin Laden. One of the men killed was reportedly bin Laden's adult son, Khalid. According to an unnamed U.S. official, only one of those killed by the SEALs was armed. Accounts also differ about what happened when SEALs encountered bin Laden on the third floor of the house. SEAL Robert O'Neill said he shot bin Laden twice in the forehead as the al-Qaeda leader hid behind a woman for cover. However, Seymour Hirsch wrote that according to his sources, bin Laden was found cowering and shot dead. The SEALs left bin Laden's body in a bag and materials seized from the house after destroying the crashed Black Hawk. President Obama told CNN the raid served as evidence he wasn't afraid to act forcefully for American interests. Obama said he hoped bin Laden's last thoughts were to realize America hadn't forgotten the 3,000 people killed by al-Qaeda on 9-11. But the president acknowledged the U.S. had to tackle the threat of terror by working with its allies to address the political and economic grievances that help extremists to recruit members. 
For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.